Hello and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're back out at the JP shop. And we got another install that we're doing today. We're finally gonna be gear swapping the Ruby Beast. As you saw on our mountain trip, I don't know if we complained about it too much in video, but it was evident that this Jeep still needed a gear swap. You know, it was a big improvement with the Super Chips tuning, just not enough. It's just not enough. You gotta do it right. You're gonna have to, if you're going to 37s, you're probably gonna want to do a gear swap and I'm taking it all the way up. I'm going to 513s. A lot of guys go to 488s. We're doing 513s. Should be a huge power difference on the low end with the Ruby Beast. Might lose some MPGs on the high end, but no one cares. You yeah, you don't need that, right? Um, it's not gonna be a full blown tutorial, but we're gonna go over some stuff along the way. By the way, we got these gears and all the master install kits from East Coast Gear Supply. They supplied all this stuff for us to do this project. One of our master install kits. For the rear. Which, as you can see, it says rear. Oh, oh cozy. Yeah, we got tons of cozies, guys. This guy's over East Coast Gear Supply hooked it up. Sure. Look at all these cozies. It's decal shirts. Yeah. All right. Um, the, master, the master kits will come with your seals, your shims. Uh, new ring gear bolts because you are supposed to use new ring gear bolts every time you unbolt a ring gear. This is our crush washer. Uh, we got all of our compounds and our RTV. And then we have our pinion bearings, which this is one of the funky ones. These are ball bearings, not uh, your conventional needle bearings. Right, and we got uh, carrier, bearings. carrier bearings, which one's big and one's small front we'll show you it just first just to show you it's, it's basically the exact same thing more another cozy another decal <laughs> oh this one's a little mangled yeah it happens it sometimes. That's but shipping. yep same thing guys though yukon makes good stuff i've used their stuff if you guys remember the gear swap that we did with the beast we use yukon gears and uh yukon install master install kits and these are OEM quality Dana, Dana Splicer gears. And this is good stuff. Nicely wrapped. That should be front. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. This one's the front. This this guy right here is the rear. We uh, opened this in a previous video. If you guys missed that, Keith and I couldn't wait. We had to open it up and check it out. And then uh, here's the pinion. Again, nicely wrapped, Dana Splicer, OE quality stuff here, guys. The good stuff. This is gonna be like a, a day and a half, almost two day project to do this gear swap. Because you guys do it all the time. This is like nothing. Well, well. yeah, <laughs> well, you can always, you can always run into problems. Trust me, Steve. trust Don't me, I know, anymore. I know, I know. But we'll be testing these things out. We'll be testing the new gear swap out when we go off road. We got a couple events coming up. We got crawling for cops. We got Ocean City, Maryland Jeep week, which will be out there in Ocean City, Maryland. Crawling, crawling for cops is, is at Rouse Creek. And then we're going to uh, crawling for canines in the fall, which will be a good time. And that's back out at Rouse Creek. So Tracy's got everything out for the front, everything that came with the kit, plus the ring and pinion. And he was actually going over some stuff with me. So these are fancy uh, axle seals. So if you look, I'm gonna hold the center and the outside still moves. These are called dynamic axle seals. And then this is uh, a normal one. This is just one piece, nothing real fancy about it. The JKs had normal ones and they also had dynamic ones. So there was an option to, to pick either normal or dynamic. The dynamics are normally a little more expensive. As always guys, we're gonna be using our B-Synthetics Amsoil. If you don't know already, I am an Amsoil dealer. My website is bsynthetics.com. Whether you purchase as a catalog customer, which is considered a retail customer, it's the full list price, or if you sign up as a preferred customer, that supports the channel. So definitely check out bsynthetics.com. I only use the best in all my vehicles, of course, Amsoil, first in synthetics. And, you got the easy pack, which makes it a lot easier to put your diff oil back in.
so what we've done is we've taken out the calipers we've taken the rotors off I have taken the bolts out for the hubs which are connected to the axle shaft still I took out our wheel speed sensor slash ABS wire and make it easier you just take these two bolts out and loosen this one it flops the whole the whole shroud down um, I also took the tie rod bar off it makes getting to the carrier a lot easier and I also took the cover off and drained it so while I was taking everything else apart it was drained and it wouldn't be that much oil and the next step is we're gonna go ahead and pop the axle shafts out Jeep's new enough, I can just tap them out. All right, guys, so the next step, he's going to remove the FAD controller. Right there is the FAD controller. What that does is that it, there's a coupler in there, and the FAD will engage the intermediate shaft, which will give you when you engage your 4x4. Basically, it's disengaged when you're not in 4x4 and two wheel drive to help your fuel efficiency, which I don't really think it's gonna make a huge difference. But when we do delete the fad, we're gonna bypass the fad with the new axle shaft. It's gonna be one solid shaft going from your carrier to, to your, your hub. And it's gonna, we're gonna delete that all together. But in another video. Pretty much just, this is your, this is what actually connects it. So up in here, they are splined, which this, once I get my hand out the way, goes up in there. And then this this fork right here will move this over and pretend our other shafts in here, I took it out. But this fork actually will move this over so that they are both connected. And that's how it transfers power through to both uh, shafts in the middle. And one reason to delete this, guys, is because it is a weak point in your actual shaft. Something different from the Beast build, this is I'm learning as, as we're going here, is that the caps are actually marked and they're two different sizes. So your, your larger cap is this side and there's actually an arrow towards the top of it pointing towards your hub, which is pretty cool. This is a lot smaller. And this is a Rubicon, so Tracy said there is a little bit more work with this because it's got an E on But learning something. That's what, that's what the channel's about, guys. It's learning. Got the E-locker unplugged. Looks like it should just come out. He's going to pop the end caps of the carrier off and we're going to remove it. So what we discovered, guys, is that there's another plug for the e-locker on the other side. So you're going to have to actually remove the whole thing, which is on the back of the housing, to unplug it and remove it to take the whole carrier out. The sports, you don't have to worry about any of this. It just comes right out. And this is similar to the JKs. you got to have to remove the whole thing on the JKs, right? And what did you say this axle housing is? An M210. An M210. Keith gets phone calls about this all the time, this specific axle. What? He's trying to hide from the camera, guys. Is that true? Yes, yes, that is true. The camera's taller than you are. Dude, I love this new tripod. This new tripod's perfect. So as you can see, Tracer removed the plug from the housing, so now the whole carrier should come out in a perfect world. This ain't perfect. I already took the shims out. Yeah. We and the pinions are out. Let's compare it to the new one. 
It's a little smaller. Yeah, new ones. Definitely a size difference there, guys. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. See it overlap. All right, guys, now that the pinion's out, the next step is gonna be to pop the seal and the race, which is gonna involve a lot more banging. Your seal's not even damaged. Would you just look at that? Now we're dripping fluid out of right? All right, well now the axle housing's completely gutted, and then we're gonna break down the stock carrier and transfer everything over to the new one. Well, guys, this video is coming to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're stopping by for the first time, make sure you smash, tap, do something to that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on all those notifications. Check out allbeastprojects.com. That's me, that's my website, my merch. Beastsynthetics.com, that's me, I'm an Amsoil dealer. All that stuff, when you purchase stuff from those websites, helps support the channel. Check out the jpshop.net. Get all your goodies for all your truck and Jeep accessories, automotive accessories from them. That helps out the channel as well. I'll stop talking. Next video, we're gonna be building the new gear and installing. I said in a previous video, we had initially planned to put the new front drive shafts in when we did the gear swap but I, I didn't want to wait any longer. We're gonna do that in another video, don't worry. New drive shaft is gonna complete, it's gonna be one solid shaft on it across there. Drive shaft or axle? I mean axle. Thank you for correcting me. I was a little confused, yeah. because you said drive shaft before. Did I really? Yes, yeah, no. you did. You might have to reshoot that one. What did I say? Drive shaft instead of axle. You said we're, so we God. are gonna do a whole new drive <laughs> shaft. I just like. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, so yeah, we forgot to mention we did take out the drive shaft. Did you say that? Did who say that? Did you say that when you were going over what you did? No, I yeah. didn't take the drive shaft out. I oh, know, it's still there. Never mind.